Hi, my name is Seymour Kazimersky. Welcome to Seymour's World. I'm, I do a commentary series, and uh, this week's commentary series was supposed to be on Thanksgiving and what we are supposed to be thanking God for and all of our friends. But I had to change it because of what happened in France this week. Uh, I've titled this commentary, Is There a Final Solution to ISIS? In bringing terror to one of the world's most beloved cities, ISIS did far more than wreck devastation on Parisians out for a Friday evening. The coordinated attacks ensured that November 13th will assume a place in the pantheon of dates that are shorthand for barbarism. The violence left millions in France and beyond fearful, traumatized, and grasping for a response. And it demonstrated the group's willingness to attack civilians and targets no matter how innocent or how soft. The attacks also ended any debate about ISIS's international ambitions. Just weeks ago, experts were divided about the group's desires, with some arguing that its focus was mostly local and that its efforts to build a caliphate in Iraq and Syria took precedence over attacks abroad. No longer. ISIS is now suspected of having, in short succession, brought down a commercial Russian airliner, launched major attacks in the heart of Beirut, and sown violence and mayhem across Paris. Perhaps the group wishes to impose a cost for interventions in Syria by France, Russia, and Lebanese Hezbollah. Possibly ISIS sees these countries and others as inevitable obstacles for the state-building project it envisions for the wider Middle East or maybe a program of catastrophic international terrorist attacks was part of the plan all along. It's hard to know precisely what motivates ISIS, but it would be folly to think that the U.S. will remain immune from its designs. America remains a harder target than Europe, but by no means an impossible one. Even before the latest spate of international attacks, FBI Director James Comey reported that ISIS-related investigations are ongoing in all 50 states. Paris certainly represented a wake-up call, but to what? Already one hears Paris certainly represented a wake-up call, but to what? Already one hears the rising of a martial spirit that faded in the years since 9-11. President Francois Hollande said that France will act by all the means necessary and in a way that will be merciless towards the barbarians. His prime minister added that France must intensify its military operations in Syria in order to annihilate ISIS. Over the weekend, France carried out airstrikes against ISIS positions in Raqqa. Expect escalations on all sides. The imperative is neither to yield to panic and fear, nor merely to continue a failing international effort to combat ISIS. I am not an expert in military tactics or international diplomacy, but obviously neither has worked. Experts, politicians, pundits, and everybody else have an opinion. But the reality is that we need to think long term. For any society or country to survive, a leader has to be in place that galvanizes their citizens to act. Even if we send thousands of troops into the area, who is our enemy? Who is our friend? I'm sorry to say there is no final solution at this time. We need to try to contain ISIS until the countries in and around ISIS realize that it's their problem just as much as it is ours. I am talking about the Arab League, all those countries that need to step up and begin the process of trying to solve its problems. We cannot do it from afar, and I don't want to see any more American kids in hospitals without arms, legs, or families losing their loved ones, begging the question, what did we accomplish? Have we learned anything from the last 50 years? Vietnam, Korea, Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan. In this case, I admire President Obama for finally realizing that sending troops in to fight somebody else's war without total commitment from the countries in NATO, and even more important, all the neighboring countries, is an effort in futility. Another effort must be to cut off the economic flow that ISIS enjoys. We know who is supplying them with billions of dollars. We know which countries and which groups are supportive of ISIS. We need to let them know that they are on the hit list. This can only be accomplished 
by total cooperation of our allies in all the countries in the Middle East. None of these steps would require a major American ground force, and in combination they would significantly enhance the international coalition's effectiveness against ISIS. Parisians today have faith that nobody, not ISIS nor any other menace, will darken the city of light. In this, they are most certainly right. Yet if ever there were a cause that should unite the civilized nations of the world, the fight against ISIS should be it. Its cruelty at home, the wanton executions, its enslavement of women, the destruction of humankind's heritage is matched only by its growing appetite to export brutality abroad. The time to stop it is now. Merci beaucoup. I thank you all for listening. My name is Seymour Kazimersky. I am the host for Seymour's World. Aloha.